You, boo, you could help solve the mystery of the woman in blue at one of Connecticut's historic landmarks. The woman in blue. It's a one-of-a-kind event for Halloween at the Isham Terry House in Hartford. Audrey Russo is there live with all the details. Audrey, we're very excited. I love this real-life clue event. Oh my gosh, it's going to be so much fun. Now, I'm wearing a blue jacket. I'm not the woman in blue, just so everybody knows. But she will be here, and she's going to be coming here to this event. Uh, I'm here with Jana Colosino. She's one of the site administrators here for the Isham Terry House. When can we expect an appearance from the woman in blue? Well, the first appearance is going to be this Wednesday night at the preview show after their tech rehearsal. So uh, you can buy tickets to the preview night. They're discounted because they're still going to be working things out and then the show actually takes place October 21st, 22nd, 28th and 29th. So those are like the Halloween weekend weekends sort of yeah. leading up to the All Hallows Eve. Yeah. Um, and tell me a little bit about I guess what people can expect if they buy a ticket. Well they're not only going to get to come in and see this really amazing uh, Hartford History Museum but they will get to interact with the actors. They'll have this really small intimate experience uh, with theater where they're actually affecting uh, the outcome of the performance. Uh, we did a show with Escapism Productions last year called Morning Wreath Upon the Door and every single one of the ten shows they did was different based on the interactions that the audience had with the actors. And the really cool thing about this is that it's set in the late 1800s, 1875, and that's when this building is from. Exactly. This house was built in 1854. The part of the house we're in now was added in 1883, and so it's exactly uh, the period of this house. Um, a lot of people might know it because it sits right on the edge of I-84 before you go into the tunnel in Hartford, uh, and everybody wonders what it is, and they show up for the performance. Oh, I've seen that house. Yeah, so this is really your opportunity if you've driven by, wondered what it was like inside, to come inside and sort of be transported to this time in history. Now, I want to hold up this little picture here because um, you were saying earlier that this is what it looked like back in that time period. You know, if you're trying to transport yourself to when this murder mystery took place, think black and white think all this original furniture and a lot of this stuff is still here today. It is exactly. This house is preserved as the Isham family lived in it. It's not a reconstruction. So when people come in they'll see the Isham family's belongings uh, in the house just like they were. And something good for people to keep in mind just if they want to come to this event. Um, you're saying that it's geared maybe a little bit more towards the older crowd? Yeah, I would say probably uh, 13 and up would be appropriate. Uh, it is a museum, so there aren't, and it's not a typical show. You're not going to be sitting in uh, seats like you would if you went to a theater. So you're going to be moving around the building, and you know there are some mature themes in the show. So I think 13 and up is a good uh, call for that. And um, one thing that people should keep an eye out for are the white chairs. That's where people yeah. can sit. Yeah, there definitely will be places for people to sit. Uh, the show runs about an hour, so we won't expect you to stand the whole time. Um, but it's not, you know, like you're just sitting there taking it in. You're interacting with the show, so you get to move around through the house, follow the actors. You may find someone's story compelling and want to hear more about them. And the more you get to know the actors and find out their secrets and have them tell you things, the better uh, prepared and the better experience that you'll have at the show uh, because you're affecting the ending. Uh, and what happened. You're solving the whodunit. Exactly. And tell me just a little bit about what it's like to have um, just such a great Halloween event in this very unique to Connecticut setting in this house that you can't get this anywhere else. Right. Well, I mean, this is a historic house museum, and doing a production like this is part of the way that we're trying to engage new audiences in a historic setting. Uh, people might think, oh, you know, I don't want to go see a boring old historic house, but this is a new way to come appreciate the stories of the time and get to experience uh, what it's like. So we brought in a whole new audience last year, and that was exactly what we wanted to do with our um, teamwork with Escapism Productions. So it was fantastic. And we've done now, this will be our third show with them, and we've got a great show planned for next spring. It's going to be inspired by Bridgerton crossed with a Midsummer Night's Dream, and it's going to be at our Phelps Hathaway house in Suffield. So we're super excited for that. I'm already hearing about the costumes, and it's, it's going to be like 
through the roof. That sounds awesome. And Kate Francis, did you hear that? Bridgerton? We got a yes, Bridgerton we fan. We both heard it. In, uh, <laughs> Kate Francis. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, the production, uh, some of the story aspects that you can expect if you come to this great show. We'll see one of the performers and we'll talk to her a little bit about what you can expect. But for now, we're going to move from the library into the parlor. More candlesticks there. Is the murder weapon in here? I don't know. We'll talk more, but I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. All right, thanks very much. Woohoo! Woohoo! Bridgerton. I know. We'll have to get tickets. Absolutely. Yeah, All right. fantastic. All right, who's.